So yeah, thanks for all coming along and, and bear with me as we work through this. Uh, it's just a process we've been working through. So obviously the um, issue that Connects was faced with was um, crane, crane truck short jacking is what we called it. Now, um, problem we were faced with is, is our inability to impact or fully extend the crane stabiliser legs as per manufacturer's requirements. Um, and the problem for this is due to the constraints of the work sites we work within. It's, it, we work on the side of roads and berms, which vary um, in size for the size of our trucks, down right of ways, and, um, yeah, and just really the impact of traffic lanes and trying to minimise the disruption we have with um, the public. Um, we've all experienced um, travelling to sites where we have cones um, everywhere and you start to wonder what's actually going on, so we try and avoid that where we can. So obviously we've, I've been asked to put together this double diamond innovation, so hopefully I've captured um, the essence of what it's about as we work through it. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, jump in. I will do my best to answer where we can. But obviously we will start at the discovery. What happens? Um, so Kinetic's work crew was observed operating a crane without the fully extended stabilizer legs. So yeah, we were out in a typical job site. Um, trucks were on the side of the road and a work safe um, inspector had to be driving past and went, hang on a minute, uh, what's going on there? So he stopped our guys and, uh, and gave us an infringement notice um, and said, you can't do that. Um, so that was a bit of a, a shock to us. And um, you can imagine we have, uh, at any given time, we probably have about 25 work crews out there working on the side of the roads, using cranes and, and trying to do the best they can. Um, so what we did then is we actually engaged with um, manufacturers to actually understand the guidelines around um, crane stabiliser legs and how they are required, why are they required to be fully extended on both sides? And that was quite interesting with um, what the manufacturers came back with. And this was just really around they were taking all practical steps they could to stabilise the vehicles that they uh, were mounted on um, and they thought it's the simplest way to protect themselves. Um, so yeah, that was really where it came down to, which was interesting. So what did we do from there as far as um, next steps? Obviously we suspended, we suspended work practices where legs couldn't be fully deployed, which was quite impacting on our business. Um, as you can imagine, the staff are questioning what's what's happening. Why are we all of a sudden being challenged on our current work practices? Uh, we implemented a working group to fully understand the impact on the business. Um, that working group probably was made up of um, managers, SMEs, um, and our fleet managers, um, and just how this was going to impact. Uh, as I said, we've got 20 odd crews uh, 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 working crews out there working at any given stage. Um, so a, a significant impact. We then, so with, with that working group, we decided to engage with the field teams to understand how big the impact actually was and was this a one-off occurrence um, or a regular um, standard practice. As it turned out, it had become standard practice. The guys weren't extending the legs um, due to the constraints. They felt there was safe to do so. They thought the vehicles had no issues with um, tipping over, you know, years of experience. Um, if they leaned against the truck, that prevented it tipping over. Just an extra counterbalance. It just became the norm. And so that was interesting. Um, we also went out to a lot of uh, industry peers, I suppose, network companies that deal with the same constraints we are. And it turned out that we weren't the only ones faced with this challenge. And a number of them had also been um, imposed um, infringement notices from WorkSafe. Uh, one in particular had to impose for them based on a photo that had been published. Um, and WorkSafe said, you're publishing something that goes against the guides. So 
It was really interesting, and I suppose it really highlighted um, our industry and how often we don't share things uh, to try and understand if, if we just try and use the the Kiwi mentality of should be right, we'll, we'll get around this um, and not be seen. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. And we also engaged with um, our vehicle manufacturers to understand what they thought could be um, implemented as in additional safety factors, modifications to enable us to continue working. This whole process probably took the better part of four weeks to really get to the bottom of it all. Um, so yes, it didn't stop our work completely, but it certainly made us rethink how we did things, how we plan jobs to ensure uh, we could do it within the rules. From there, um, the opportunity, state, opportunity statements come to the develop stage. Um, we engaged with an external engineer to um, test individual vehicles for stability with reduced leg extensions. So in fact, every crane truck has a weight chart on it that says when the legs are fully extended, you can lift uh, X amount of weight at a distance from the truck. And the further, further you go out, the, the, just the weight factor reduces. What we then decided to do with the engineer is we picked up a standard weight um, and we moved the legs from what we call half jacking and short jacking. Half jacking being half a distance out from fully extended and short jacking is straight down. And the engineer then moved the crane into positions that he then felt the vehicle stability was being compromised. So then he um, issued us a certificate saying that this vehicle is now um, valid to um, operate within these weights at these distances. So that was our solution um, and that was really good. We then um, took that out to industry as well and, and shared with our peers who all thought um, that initiative was really good. Um, and subsequently, a number of them have also implemented it. Um, we also reviewed and updated our current procedures. So um, and in most cases, uh, we probably had to create some to, to do so. So from there, here's an example of what we put out with the trucks. And so you can see on um, what we found is that every truck had different weights, even though they had the same size crane on them, they actually tested differently um, within small percentages of uh, weight categories. But you can see up top there, it says a, a standard um, load in the, in the blue column. It shows what can be lifted at 100%. We then rated them down to 90% and 75% lifting capacities um, as per some of our clients' requirements. So yeah, it was just a chart we put together um, and then we took the staff through the training so they understood it. And, and created the stickers that we then mounted on the crane, cranes themselves in a place that the staff could see. It was part of them then creating their um, lifting plans. Um, sorry, I thought I had one in here, lifting plan. Um, so yeah, so that was another thing we implemented was the use of a lifting plan. Again, it had become standard practice that we lifted this pole yesterday. Why do we have to, nothing's changed on it. Why should we create another lifting plan? We weren't taking into consideration the factors around us, um, ground ground stability, um, levelness of the ground, and so on. So it was a real education process um, for our staff. So that was a, um, a really big uh, movement for us that uh, when we presented this back to WorkSafe, they, as much as WorkSafe would endorse it, they wouldn't endorse it in, in um, writing because they can't be seen to be in conflict with the manufacturer's um, requirements. But the fact that we had gone through and found a solution that kept us compliant um, was really good. So what have we done from there? Well, yeah, we provided training to the end users for updating procedures and short jacking lifting charts. 
we updated our vehicle policy to include new, to new technology. So since then, every truck that we have um, purchased, manufactured, we have insisted that the crane on it comes with uh, the sensor, the limit sensors, which in our industry brings in its own challenges. But again, all that's done has forced us to come up with another initiative to remove holes from the ground. Um, all work practices are coming to place and again the Kiwi solution will we'll make it work. Um, we had to change the way we do things. And then we've shared solutions with the industry. So our process we've been through has been shared with um, our entire industry um, at the CEO level down to um, EEA conference and bits and pieces. It was, it's been published, I believe, on the Knowledge Network, which is our industry base. And obviously, hopefully through this it, it, um, and your context, it will enable others to start thinking about how their work practices carry on. So it's a bit of a quick overview, um, and I'm sorry about that, but I'm happy to go through and answer any questions as best I can um, and, and jump back between some slides if needed. So um, I'm going to open the floor up to anybody. Thanks very much, Peter. Does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, yes, this is Rowan from Argenta Manufacturing. Uh, thanks for the presentation, Peter. It's definitely uh, an interesting one. Um, what sort of uh, engineering uh, testing was done um, and who did you um, use for the uh, assessment? So, um, we went, we went through a crane a truck manufacturer through Wyomere Cranes up in Nelson, and they engaged a an engineer that signs off their trucks uh, once they've been manufactured. And what and what he does is uh, he lifts up a weight. It was a one one ton weight that he hung off the end of a crane, and as it went out, he had sensors on the vehicle that monitored, um, I suppose, the tip load to where he felt that the, the balance had gone too far past the centre of gravity. Understand, makes sense. Thank you. Uh, there's one more question I have. The 30% um, short jack limit, is that the smallest that was achievable through the testing? And does that cover all your um, constrained work sites? Uh, Yes, effectively, what we've what we've what we've introduced with our teams is that they now are required to do a preload uh, lifting chart before they leave the yard or to go to site, and if it's been determined that the, the load that they are lifting and the parameters on site don't fit with the truck that they've got, then we need to bring in a bigger vehicle that that has that capacity um, that can lift safely with having the reduced leg extensions. I understand, thank you. Thanks very much, Rohan and Peter. Any further questions? Hi Peter, Karen here. Hi Karen. Hey, quick question as to what checks have been done as a follow-up to ensure that the team actually understand the procedures um, that have been put in place, like, is it included into some sort of audit or something like that? Uh, so, yes, yeah, so part of our, that's a good question, and part of our company policy, we actually have a, what's called a competency framework, where we go and assess all our um, staff against certain tasks, and one of those assessments is actually crane operation. So there's questions within there that they have to answer, what they know about the policy, procedures, and, and can talk to it rather than having to go, oh, there's a document. So it's it's an ongoing journey. I wouldn't say that we have it 100% correct, but the more we get through it with our staff and certainly the onboarding of any new staff, they are taken through it straight away. So it's been a big learning curve for everyone. That's good. Well done. You helped us with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to see what had been put in place since. Yeah, no, no, we've That's we, good. we absolutely created a new comms document to assess our nice. staff with. Yeah. Very good. 
good to see it working. Yes. Working in theory, I have to yeah. say. Have any other companies taken it on board? Like there's a few um, of them adopted it or something similar? Is there anything else uh, that anyone else has done? No. Um, there's two questions here. Uh, yes, some companies have um, taken, they've said they've taken on board what we've presented and have engaged with um, YMEA to get the engineer to, to do their vehicles. Um, and uh, what was the second question? Sorry. Um, um, have they come up with anything else? Oh, anything new? I'm, I'm not aware of any other. No, I think I suppose it's this was the quick solution. Um, our, especially our industry, there's been a lot of avoidance to go to the new technology because it does hamper how we currently operate. Um, and um, the reluctance from the field staff to 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 effectively slow their task down and make it more cumbersome has been a challenge. And um, again, I, I go back to the the Kiwi attitude of you know it should be right. You know it's we we we've done it for so long this way. Why why will we change? And it's good, Pete. You've also got these documents and the certification in the vehicles, so that yes. anyone of WorkSafe rock on up to site that they can actually see everything is all there in each doc, in each folder, which is good. Correct, and and that goes back to because of the charts are specific to the vehicle. Well done. Thank you, Peter. I was just going to ask about when you talked about sharing the problem initially with industry. How did you get on doing that? Because I imagine, obviously, it was well received when you sort of came to people, people facing a similar problem. But how did you actually go about doing that? So. There's a, there's a number of us in the company that belong to a couple of contractor forums where we were asked to do presentations. So, um, so um, I, I, I participate in two contractor groups and one of my peers is, he's, I think he's on another two as well. So we did presentations there um, and then um, as we go to network, network companies, they have their own contractor engagement days as well and it was discussed there so it's, it has been a big learning for our industry as to our current practices but there's definitely still the some out there that just go oh we don't need to worry about this yeah it's been a there's definitely an ongoing challenge well well done for making it sort of or bringing it to an industry level too because i'm sure it's been very well appreciated and something i guess you know everyone in this community can take on regardless of the technical or nature of the problem. You know, there'll be others out there facing similar issues, no doubt, to um, ones everyone else is facing. Um, I see, John, you've got your hand up. Hi, Peter. Thank you for that. That was uh, re really good. Um, what I liked about that was um, that you were you asked that question about what is everybody else doing, which I think's quite an important insight because I think we sometimes forget to ask that question. We just get on with solving problems within our own organizations without trying to understand what's normal. So I, re I really like that. Um, and I love the, the way that you shared the solution afterwards, which was good because we sometimes forget to do that as well, I think. Um, I certainly do. And yep. um, and so, so I had a couple of things I wondered about. So number one was when you were seeking about what that work as normal look like, did you did you just go to organisations within your own industry or did you look further afield? Well, we probably went to our, I would say the high percentage was our own industry because that's obviously it's where you, all your contacts are and your, and your relationships where people are probably more comfortable to share not information. Um, we talked to a couple of our contract or subcontractors um, and they were probably part of and still are part of the should be right attitude. You know, um, they're, they're probably the ones and that haven't um, picked up on the limits because it will impact greatly on theirs. So, um, yeah, it's been a challenge, but yeah, everyone's faced with it, but it's just how they want to deal with it. It's, it was, I say some, I think some businesses or our industry have liked it, others haven't because when they get pulled up, WorkSafe say, well, there's, some, there's a solution out there. 
why aren't you using that? Uh, so it's it's a typical, seems to be a typical uh, response. Sure, and I suppose the thing that really I was wondering around after when you were telling that story was that point where after WorkSafe had visited you guys and put that um, improvement notice in place, that there was some of the work that you had to cancel because it was planned on those tight sites that you were describing. Yep. What I was wondering was when you kind of announced that and said, hey, there's a bunch of work that we're not going to do because the sites are tight. Were there any surprises in terms of finding that the constraints around the sites in some cases were released or opened up? Did, did you have any surprises there that allowed you to continue to do the work? So, so I suppose my question is around your client's response to that. Like, were the constraints that were perceived around these tight sites, were they real or were in some cases, were they not real? Mixture of both, to be honest. Um, a, lot, a lot of, probably 50% of the constraints were dealing with the road and it had become a behaviour, I suppose you call it, within our, well, certainly within our company where oh, we want to minimise the disruption to traffic. So let's not, or, or the cost of traffic management. So we let's try and minimise our impact on the road. So the fact that we have to, Put the, if we can't get the vehicles off the road and like everyone now with all the rain, it certainly impacts on us getting any vehicle on onto a grass berm. We've we've put more um, requirements of what impacted on the road, which ultimately then feeds on to the client was in costs to do traffic management. And so again, they they challenge you, but understand we have to meet the industry rules. You know, all the legislative requirements of when working on the road, you must have appropriate traffic management out. And it's a significant cost nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I suppose then, so from what you're saying then, that so that there was that kind of extra learning, I suppose, which is that if you poke back at your clients, you can end up with more room and probably don't need to get into short jacking. Was that right? Or Yeah. I mean, yes. I, I, as in a lot of the situations, the short jacking was purely a cultural. Um, decision as opposed to the client going well go and do the job and and and, and we're thinking how can we do this job um, so it's suppose it's crept in, in our environment we work in a competitive market uh, for tenders and say how can we do the job how can we reduce our costs and part of that is obviously by limiting our need for traffic management so um, that was probably the bigger learning and and asking challenging the business um, why are we taking these shortcuts? That's cool. Thanks very much, John. Any further questions while we've still got Peter with us? Uh, one final one, perhaps the knowledge network that you mentioned, Peter, uh, about the publishing. Uh, would we be able to share that? Or where can I find it? So I am quite keen to see or read the publication. Um, so I think that's a it's actually part of the electricity industry's knowledge network. So I understand. I think you have to be a member to be a part of that one there. Um, as far as sharing the document, I'll have to check to see where that is to make sure that uh, we can share it. Uh, which I, I personally don't have an issue with it, but I suppose just with the uh, the next level, I need to make sure that we can share that document um, through the, through this community. I understand. Thank you. Well, that's fine. Well, perhaps, Peter, if you look into that and if you are able to, you can send it to me and I can send it to those on the call today if you're interested, if it, if it can be shared. Mm -hmm. yep. Thanks, Thank everyone. I'll, I'll discuss it with Tracy. Sure, sounds good. Uh, anything further before we um, thank Peter and head off? No, looks good. Thank you very much again, Peter. We appreciate you sharing this and uh, in you know quite good detail with your slides and your explanations and also your willingness to share and not just with us, but obviously industry ride ride wide right from the start of the problem right through to the solution. I think that's just a really excellent example of what uh, we try to sort of emulate in this community um, with some of the, the challenges that we're all facing. Um, in different industries. So look, thank you very much. Uh, and I will send around the recording when it's available. And if those documents are available, we can send those around too. 
Um, but thank you for your time. Much appreciated. And very good to see everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.